This episode is brought to you by Honeysuckle White. If you're looking for ways to make mealtime healthier in the new year, make your favorite recipes with turkey from Honeysuckle White. Take the pressure off. Keep it simple and tasty without sacrificing flavor for nutrition. Whether you want a delicious sandwich or post-workout protein, Honeysuckle White Turkey can do it all. Visit HoneysuckleWhite.com for recipe inspiration and to find retailers near you. Honeysuckle White. Eat what you love. Brooks Running has a new shoe for you runners out there. Did you hear that? Better turn up your volume. In fact, turn it up to the max. Introducing the all-new Ghost Max. It's got all kinds of things to make your knees and ankles feel protected, like Max Cushion, Max Soft Landings with DNA Loft V2 Foam, and Max Smooth Rides with their Glide Roll Rocker. Feel better on your run with Ghost Max. Learn more at brooksrunning.com. It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 3059, Am I a Minimalist Yet? by Anthony Angaro of BreakTheTwitch.com and your narrator, Justin Mollick. And I'm gonna keep this intro nice and minimal for Minimalist Monday, so let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Am I a Minimalist Yet? by Anthony Angaro of BreakTheTwitch.com. Six years ago, when my wife Amy and I started decluttering for the very first time, I remember wondering, am I a minimalist yet? At what point in the process would I be able to call myself a minimalist? Over the years, I've come across people who identify as minimalists who have more things than we do. I also know people who identify as minimalists who have significantly fewer physical things than we do. There seems to be a broad spectrum of what it means to be a minimalist, and that's a beautiful thing. But what that also means is there's no board certification of minimalism. Throughout your decluttering journey, there's no point in the process where you officially qualify as a minimalist. And as you can imagine, that is both incredibly confusing and very liberating as well. Now that I'm well into six years of practicing minimalism, I found a definition that has been the most helpful. Minimalism is perhaps not something to be, but a practice of removing distractions in your life. The distractions can be physical items or even digital things. That twitch you get when you check your smartphone, put it away, and then wanna check it right away again. The twitch is what often leads us to acquire more and more things we don't need because we have some discomfort we are trying to fill. We try to solve the twitch through checking our phones or online purchases that may feel good at the moment, but doesn't solve the underlying discomfort we're feeling. With viewing minimalism as more of a habit of practice of continually removing distractions, it means you can't declutter your house really quickly in a day or two or delete all the apps off your phone immediately and expect everything to always be better. Being a minimalist is the active practice of removing distractions and requires consistent daily effort. With that in mind, here are some tips for keeping minimalism as a practice and maintaining the progress you've made. Number one, create intentional friction. The first tip is to create intentional friction to help you manage certain distractions in your environment. This is great for the distractions that are more difficult to completely remove from your environment, so they need to be managed. An example of this would be if you are trying to change your habit of using as many paper towels. You can put a rubber band around your paper towel, which introduces purposeful, intentional friction in the process of grabbing a paper towel. So if you're washing your hands and would normally grab a paper towel on autopilot, you have to work harder to get a paper towel than you did before, thus giving you a moment to pause, consider, and then make a more conscious choice. Another example of this would be relocating your favorite social media app off of the main screen and burying it in a folder somewhere else on your phone. You can add a few extra steps to access the app so you can't quickly twitch and open the app in those in-between moments. Creating some intentional friction provides you a little more time so you can make a more conscious decision. Even if you still decide to open the app, that's perfectly fine. Creating intentional friction in your environment is how you can change your habits and live more intentionally. Number two, reduce unintentional friction. This is the exact opposite of creating intentional friction by reducing unintentional friction for the things you want to do more of in your life. If you wanna run more, putting your running shoes right by the door creates less friction between you and the decision to put on your shoes and go running. If you have a certain app that's beneficial for you to use more of, You can put it in the most accessible place on the main screen of your phone 
So every time you look at your phone, it's the first thing you see. It's a powerful thing when we constantly look at our environment and find ways to optimize it so that we can more fully own our attention and time. Number three, observe the Twitch. The final idea is to simply observe and acknowledge the Twitch. When you start feeling that discomfort to buy something, even though you just spent a bunch of time decluttering, or if you want to reinstall and open an app you've recently deleted off your phone, take a moment to simply acknowledge the discomfort. The most important thing is to be aware of the Twitch and to acknowledge it. It's even more helpful to say what you're feeling out loud. You can say, I'm really feeling the Twitch to check my phone right now. That way you're creating a connection between what you're feeling, thinking, seeing, saying, and hearing. Even if you end up buying something or opening a social media app on your phone, it's okay. At least you're owning your attention and making a conscious choice. Everyone should be a minimalist if it's simply an active practice of removing distractions from our lives. Minimalism is an incredibly powerful tool that we can use to design a life that's easier to do the things that matter and harder to do the things that get in the way. But it's even more beneficial to think about minimalism as a habit or practice rather than something we become once we hit a certain milestone or as a certain aesthetic. There's no right or wrong way. Being a minimalist is simply removing distractions in the way that works best for you. You just listened to the post titled, Am I a Minimalist Yet? by Anthony Angaro of BreakTheTwitch.com. And I'll be right back with my commentary. How do you feel great on vacation? Like really good? Easy, you go to Aruba. You'll spend your time relaxing on cool white sand beaches and floating in healing blue water. You'll immerse yourself in natural wonder and find your center on an island where things move at your speed. You won't just feel great. You'll feel relaxed, renewed, and ready for life. That's the Aruba effect. Plan your trip at aruba.com. Picture that thing you've always wanted to learn. Now picture learning it from the person who's literally the best at it in the world. That's what you get with Masterclass. Masterclass offers unlimited access to intimate one-on-one classes with over 180 world-class instructors. Plus, every new membership comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. There are over 200 classes to pick from, with new classes added every month, like John Kabat-Zinn's. He's a mindfulness expert who teaches you how to incorporate meditation into your everyday life. I've loved his class. He's been mentioned on this podcast before, and it's really helped me to hone my meditation skills, especially when I'm out and experience stressful situations and don't have the time or space to have a proper meditation session. Thanks to his class, I've been able to stay more composed no matter what's happening. And right now, our listeners will get an additional 15% off an annual membership at masterclass.com old. Get 15% off right now at masterclass.com old. Masterclass.com old. Thank you to Anthony. A good reminder that there really is no end goal with minimalism or happiness or most of the things in life that we talk about on this show. Goals are fine, even though Leo Babauta of Zen Habits has talked about eliminating goals, but they're really just stepping stones and sort of keeping us on track with an active practice that Anthony talked about in this article. Once you reach that goal, it becomes a sort of now what situation. Are you done? I'd hope not. Many of the goals we set are around personal growth, like minimalism, weight loss, positivity, things like that. And none of those, even weight loss, reach a point where you can just say, yay, I'm done. If you did that with weight loss, you just gain it all back in the next couple of weeks and months. So all these things are really never-ending journeys as opposed to end points or destinations. And enjoying that journey is arguably the most important part. So take happiness, for example. We know we can never just be in a permanent state of happiness. Bad things will always happen, that's life. But we can practice things we learn on this show like gratitude, minimalism, meditation, things like that, so that on average, our daily happiness increases and we find that looking back maybe years ago, on average, our days were like a four or five out of 10, maybe even less. But now our days average like a seven with occasional tens and maybe fives and the rare twos and threes. To me, that's happiness. When we realize that overall, when looking longer term, 
our days are happier in general, not just on any given day. So try to keep that in mind as we start this week, a little detour from minimalism and Minimalist Monday, but it all relates. Thank you for being here, it really means a lot. I'll be curating articles for you again here tomorrow, so have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the Tuesday show, where optimal life awaits.